Hey, welcome to No Can Do. My name is Clara, and in the month of April, I had nine sales and one fail flipping furniture. If you wanna see what I did, what went wrong, what I learned, and how much I made, just keep watching. The first sale this month was one that came to me back in February. I got this vintage cane bentwood rocker for free from next door. I actually posted that I was looking for chairs and a lady reached out to give this to me. That's one of my top flipping tips is let the furniture come to you. So I got it for free. It was in really good shape and all I did was clean it up, dust it, screw in a screw and give it a little bit of oil to make it come back to life a little bit. All in all, between picking it up and cleaning and fixing it up a little bit, it took me less than an hour. So I staged it and I listed it, but no one wanted it. I thought this would be a great sale. I've seen some other people on YouTube flip these, but apparently there are a ton of these for sale in my area and they really aren't selling for much. So that's why this sat in my apartment for two months. But finally, after waiting a couple months and lowering the price a few times, I sold it in April for $60. Not the best, but I only spent about an hour of work on this, so 60 bucks for an hour of work, not too shabby. Sale number two was this awesome tan chair that I also got for free from next door. It was really, really heavy, and it was also pretty dirty. You can see on the armrest, there was a lot of dirt and grime. So I cleaned this up with my Bissell upholstery cleaner, and after I did, it looked pretty good. The bottom underneath the chair, though, was falling apart. The springs were kind of sagging out, and the fabric underneath there that would hold it in wasn't holding it in. So I just covered up the whole bottom with about $10 worth of burlap, and it was pretty easy. I also just sanded the legs a little bit and put on some wax on them to kind of bring them back to life. But that's it. I staged this and I listed it and sold it within two days for $140. That's a profit of $130. Not bad for sale number two. Sale number three was this trash to treasure journey with this broken, beat up, gross TV stand. Upon further inspection, I'm pretty sure a pet rabbit may have chewed this, the front part of this, to bits. At first I thought it was a cat, but I also found like a piece of hay in it. So I think that someone maybe just had a pet rabbit and they let them, I don't know, live in this TV stand. But I definitely cleaned the heck out of this and I had to sand it. I learned how to use wood film. I used a saw, I broke a bunch of glass, <laughs> I stapled, I added in burlap. Basically, I learned so much throughout this flip. I painted it with Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I didn't have the best experience with using a paintbrush. I kept getting streaks and stuff, but, but I ended up distressing it. If you wanna follow along and see the whole journey of this piece, I have a whole video on it, which I will link. I spent $10 on this TV stand and $35 on materials. I originally listed it for $200, which I did not get. 
So I ended up lowering the price a little bit every few days, but I really, really needed to get this out of the garage. I've been using a garage space with some family members and they had a bunch of stuff coming to the garage that they needed to store there. So I was in a rush in April to get as much stuff out of there as I possibly could. So I ended up selling this for $100, which was lower than I wanted to go, but I just decided that this was a learning piece and it's fine. So the profit for this one was $55. Sale number four was so quick and lovely. This gorgeous, beautiful, pearly, tufted vintage chair and ottoman. I got this for $23 on OfferUp and I brought it home, ripped off the skirt and cleaned it with my Bissell upholstery cleaner. It had a few stains on it that were hard to get out as I was staging it outside, a neighbor walked by who seen me flipping furniture in the driveway and she told me that she was interested in buying it for her house. So I ended up selling it to her for $100. I know I could have gotten probably a lot more for it if I had listed it, but she's my neighbor and she's awesome and she saved me the trouble of having to list it. And I also really needed to get stuff out of the garage as soon as I could. So this was a very quick flip and a profit of $77. Sale number five and six. This was another somewhat tumultuous series of flips in which I learned a ton. I cleaned up these chairs with my Bissell upholstery vacuum. And I ripped off the skirts only to find that the swivel rocker on the bottom had wood poking out and it looked bad. And also there was some fabric missing from the bottom. So ripping the skirt off, it didn't look good on the bottom. So I wasn't going to be able to sell a chair like that. And so I ended up gluing part of the skirt trim back on. I was pretty frustrated that I took off the skirt only to have to glue and staple it back on. But that's when I realized, why should we even rip the skirts off in the first place? It would have just been easier to fold it under and glue and staple it in place. I like the look of these chairs without a skirt, but through this process, I found an easier way to flip chairs and that's the only way I'm doing it going forward. No more ripping. After I got part of that trim of the skirt back on, the chair looked better, but the wood was still poking through from the swivel rocker and I thought it looked really bad. So I decided to take the swivel rockers off and then place them sideways so that you couldn't see the wood. This was pretty easy and it looked way better, but when I actually went to sit in the chairs, they felt really strange. It kind of felt like I was on a boat and it was rocking side to side. And I think that someone would have been really confused <laughs> sitting in that. So I took a few weeks away from these chairs because I was really frustrated and I wasn't exactly sure what to do. And when I came back, I just decided to just put new legs on them. I had already gotten some legs in the mail from Menards. So I stained them, I screwed them in, and I staged them up. I ended up selling the pair for $300. And after spending $75 on the pair of chairs and $46 on the legs, I made a $179 profit. What's more is I timed myself on this flip and I spent five hours on these chairs. It felt like a lot more, but it was only five hours. So that ends up being $35 per hour, which is not bad. And of course I learned a lot. Sale number seven was this gorgeous red vintage mid-century modern chair. 
It was also a swivel rocker. So I cleaned this up with my Bissell and I took off the swivel rocker. By this point, I had learned all I needed to learn about skirts and swivel rockers and legs. And I decided to not rip off the skirt. This was my moment of brilliance. Genius. Then I flipped this upside down. I folded the skirt over and I hot glued and stapled the skirt in place. Then I took some legs that I got from Menards and I stained them and screwed them on. I spent $15 on this chair and $23 on the legs. So all in, I was at $38. I ended up selling this chair for $180, which is a profit of $142. So while we're talking about chairs, enter fail number one. I got this chair for free from next door. It was in okay shape, but it had a lot of pet hair on it. So I cleaned it up with my Bissell upholstery vacuum and it was better. I took the cushion cover off and threw that in the laundry. time to paint another chair. I had recently finished chalk painting a velvet chair successfully for another video, so I thought maybe I should give this pinstriped one a makeover and have it be all one solid color. I asked over on my Instagram stories what people thought I should do, should I paint it, should I leave it, and the consensus was paint it, so I tried. I got some Annie Sloan chalk paint and I used the same technique that I used on my other chair that was successful but this one was a fail. All right, so I let the paint dry on the screen chair for a couple of days, and I'm just coming back to it, and honestly, I feel like it looks pretty bad. Okay, this might be stupid. This might be really stupid. I just bought an orbital sander. Because I'm pretty sure there's no way in the world you're supposed to be using an orbital sander on fabric, but you better bet I'm gonna try. The texture was really stiff despite sanding it with a power sander, which was maybe a sketchy move. but I had a lot of other projects and this one wasn't going well and I just didn't think it was worth it. The color was patchy and strange. I felt like the paint had a weird reaction with the cleaning solution that I used for the upholstery and in some spots it was kind of like a rusted brown alongside the green and obviously I didn't like that. So could I have saved it? Maybe. Did I want to? No. Should I have painted it in the first place? Probably not. <laughs> At some point you just need to call it and I decided that after three coats of paint and it was looking bad, it was time for me to be done. I didn't even bother to paint the cushion. I listed this for free on Facebook Marketplace and to my surprise, I had several offers for it. So I put this out on the curb and it was gone within a day. That was my fail. Sale number eight was where I really hit my stride. I found this TV stand for $10 and I got some inspiration from the YouTubers, Jamie and Sarah, who flip furniture. 
They've been making these cane credenzas out of old TV stands. This TV stand was in pretty decent shape, so I just cleaned it up, removed the doors and the hardware, and gave it a light scuff sand. Then I got to try out a paint sprayer for the first time. I used the Wagner Flexio 3000 and I loved it. It was so much faster and easier than painting with a brush or a roller and I liked the way it looked as well. I used Annie Sloan chalk paint for this in Athenian black and just added a little bit of water to make it easier to spray. I took the glass out of the doors and I added in cane. So first I soaked the cane in warm water for 30 minutes, then I patted it dry and I stapled it into the doors. You do need to put a staple between each and every hole in the cane so that it pulls nice and taut. When the staples are all in and the cane dries, it actually pulls and it becomes nice and smooth and tight and it has just a really clean, crisp, finished look. I spray painted the hardware with a light gold spray paint and I reattached the doors. This is where I ran into a problem. The doors were hanging crooked and I looked back at the before pictures and noticed that they had always been hanging crooked. So after trying a couple of different options, I ended up just drilling new holes and then it hung the way it needed to hang and the doors were a little bit more even. I put on a protective top coat and then I staged and listed this. I've listed all the materials that I used on all of these projects down in the description box. So if you wanna check them out for yourself, you can. Overall, I spent $10 on the TV stand and $44 on materials like paint, cane, and the top coat. I sold it for $200 for a profit of $146. And last but not least, my pride and joy, sale number nine, was this beat up vintage mid-century tanker desk. This was a beast, but at this point in the month, I had acquired enough skills and tools to give it a truly dramatic transformation. Again, I have a whole video on this one project, which I'll link down below if you want to see each step in more detail. So I cleaned this with a degreaser removed all the hardware, and then I got to sanding. I was sanding for what felt like days. I used my orbital sander, I used an electric sander, I started at out with 80 grit sandpaper. I worked my way up to 220 grit sandpaper. I used so much sandpaper on this desk because it had a lot of nicks and dings and whatever stain was on top was just kind of rough. So next time I'm probably going to use citrus strip or another paint stripper just to start with and then I'll sand after that. Luckily, my friend Mackenzie came by and helped me out, which made it go a little bit faster. Once I was done sanding and cleaning, it was time to fill in all the holes and gaps in this piece with wood fill. So we used wood filler from Minwax and it's a putty, so you just have to take a little bit of the hardening filler and mix that in with the other wood fill and it, it gets, it has like an epoxy reaction. I used Kills Primer, which is an oil-based primer and it's supposed to help block stains from wood tannins or old stain leaking through. Once I'd finished priming everything, it was time to start painting. 
And for this, I used Rust-Oleum chalked paint in linen white. And again, I put it in my sprayer, my Flexio 3000 from Wagner. It was a little hard on this piece to tell if I had gotten a good flow through the paint sprayer or not, just because the paint was almost the exact same color as the primer. So I went over a few different times and I went horizontally and vertically to make sure that I'd gotten all the area with good coverage and then I let it dry. After a couple coats of the linen white chalked paint, it was time to get to work on the top of the piece. So for this, I decided to use a stain from Minwax in red oak and I just went through and I stained the top. I gave it a couple layers of stain and then I put on polyurethane to seal it and protect it. I did the same thing with all of the drawers and for the hardware I went ahead and sprayed it with gold spray paint and protected it with a top coat of polyurethane. I went through in the drawers and used a little bit of orange oil to kind of spruce up the insides of the drawers to make them smell nice and then I staged this and listed it. I was really worried about whether or not I could sell this desk because I'd worked so hard on it and I thought it looked really great, but I just didn't know what other people would think. But it turns out some people from a town almost two hours away from me saw this on Facebook Marketplace and drove up to come get it. They loved it and they paid full price, which was $300. I got this desk for free and I spent about $40 in paint and materials and things like that and I sold it for $300 giving me a profit of $260 on this piece. This desk was also a lot of work but I feel like after everything I've learned in my third month of flipping in the month of April I really feel like I know what I can and can't do and I have a better idea of what types of pieces to look for, what types of work I like doing and what kind of work I don't like doing, and what types of furniture I want to keep flipping in the future. So I would say overall this month was a great success. So after totaling up all of my profits and subtracting the $20 that I lost on the green chair. I ended up making $1,029 of profit in the month of April from my furniture flips. Thanks so much for watching. The month of April was really transformative for me. I hope that this video was helpful, inspiring, and maybe entertaining. And make sure to check out the rest of my videos, which go more in depth on each of these projects. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.